Good evening and welcome one more time from the summer exhibition at the Schloss Museum Linz. My name is Markus Reindl and today is the fourth and final talk with one of the artists featured in this exhibition. Altogether more than 250 works in various disciplines like painting, photography, sculpture and video by 180 artists are currently on view on the ground floor of the Schloss Museum and the exhibition has just been extended until the 4th of October. My guest tonight is the artist Evely Wagner. She's working on interventions with and in nature, which she calls avant gardening. In the summer exhibition, two of her paintings are on view. We will talk about this uh, and more in a few moments. I will now try to invite her in. Uh, and here she Just building up the connection. Hey, hi, Evely. Hi. <laughs> so. <laughs> this was this was quick getting the connection. Last time it took me like minutes. <laughs> yes, although I'm in the countryside, so yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Ifeli, where are you? Where are you speaking from? Um, so I'm in my studio, which is actually also my living room. That's why I can show you only this part because here it um, would not be a good idea. Yes, and I'm. Uh, it's on a farm, and it's situated like. 37 kilometers from Linz. No, oh, yeah, that's uh, that's very exact, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I yeah. drive this route very often. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, sure you do. <laughs> Uh, right behind me on the wall, we can uh, see two paintings by you as uh, part of the summer exhibition, uh, but paintings are only a small part of what you do. Maybe you can describe your personal artistic practice to us. Um, so I um, do site-specific installations and I um, combine like organic and non-organic materials together. So it's it can be like a site-specific uh, installation with botanic materials together with a painting or an object. And, but it's always very, um, it depends on the room and on the space and on the topic. So I use quite a lot of um, materials and yes. So it's not okay. only one thing I do. <laughs> uh, so um, it talked about working with plants where we for sure will talk more about it because this is very uh, special kind, kind of unique at least your, your approach. Uh, plants are considered objects but are in fact very much alive and uh, working with living matter does bring very specific challenges I guess. So what do you find most difficult working with plants? Uh, yes it's difficult. I um, I have to plan a lot so um, if I want to do something in I don't know, May, I have to look which flowers can I have, um, what is um, growing, um, how, how is the size of the, of the plants. And so I have to plan it really very, um, yes, very, very in detail. But at the end, I have to have also, I have to be very um, spontaneous because it's nature and uh, you never know what you get. And sometimes I think like, oh, maybe Rittersporn is, um, it could be, I could involve Rittersporn and then it's like two weeks later and there is no Rittersporn anymore. So um, this is kind of tricky sometimes. <laughs> and also um, because it's alive, they need water, they need light. So um, I have to look very closely, how is the space? Can I do it here? And um, yeah, that's kind of really, um, so a painting is sometimes easier, <laughs> I can say. <laughs> uh, and, and, and yeah, yeah as, as you, sorry. No, like also for the installation, like how is the floor? Because I did it a lot of times in old buildings. And then I have to look because I don't want to damage something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, 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 you mentioned that the plants are permanently slow but they are growing and, and evolving and, and, and everything. So at, at which point do you declare your work finished and, and, and take yourself out as an artist and let the plants take over? Do you maybe even consider them your, your partner or accomplice? Ah, it's like this gardener feeling. Yes, you, you, you never, you always have like, oh, what are you doing and how will it look like in, in, in one week? And, um, I think it's a mixture between um, pragmatism and 
on the other hand side it's uh, intuition so sometimes i have to stop it and say like now it's okay it's 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 over i will do it like this and it sometimes helps if you sleep over it so <laughs> if you can have a second look on it but yeah so every time i'm do it's it's every time it's a it's a new experiment so that's why it's really troubling for me because i normally have to build it up on on the day of the exhibition so um i'm like <laughs> really done because um at the evening so um yes it's but then it's normally it's like okay now it's five o'clock i have to finish it <laughs> Okay, to, to be honest, I expected that you have like weeks before an exhibition to, to set it up. So you have, really have to, to prepare everything in your head and in your planning and then bring it there. Yeah, yeah, normally because, okay. so it depends. I, but normally if you work with fresh flowers or I did um, two times a bit like this hanging garden thing or like three times, um, but I needed to be, to have them really fresh. So I had to do this on one day and this makes it so troubling for me because in the evening I want to go home and I want to sleep. <laughs> because it's really like, yeah, you, you want to have them fresh, as fresh as, as but if you work mm -hmm. with dry flowers, it's, it can be, it depends when you have more time or if they are alive, then you also have more time. But then you have to prepare it normally for the photo shooting, so yeah. Okay, so but your, your work is also very um, uh, e e ephemeral, so it, it, it's really like um, uh, even during the exhibition and at least after the exhibition at some time, it's, it's kind of gone. So do you in any, in any uh, way try to uh, store it, to, to, to document it? Yeah, I find out it's a because the first time I only worked with, I did this installation thing only with flowers, I, I just, I was in a residency and I just had my iPhone with me. And it was so sad because the photos, um, um, yeah, you need a good material because it's so ephemeral, it's just for one day or it's also changing. So you need some photos of the, of the, of the process. And I have a really good photographer in Vienna and, um, yeah, I normally I, I ask him if he can if he can do it. Uh, it's really important. It's it's the it's one of the most important parts. So I'm always looking when I do the installation. I I do the installation and then I'm looking. Okay, to have the, like this one hour for the photo shoot because um, that's for me more important than the the vernissage. In fact, because this is the only thing that stays and this is also the only thing that I can show to somebody or I can. Um, sell to somebody so um yeah it's it's it, this is also the thing you have to plan <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. if we're talking about the art market this is how you are present uh, in, in the art market with photographs of your work no not really i um i would say it's more like this is how i'm present in like this visual uh, like this instagram thing so i at the art market i'm still present with the paintings and I do, sometimes I do collaborations with other people and with photographers and this is the material I sell. So, uh -huh. but, uh, but the documentation is completely necessary also to go to another spot to, 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 that you can say, okay, this is what I want to do or something like that. So, uh -huh. because this is my portfolio. And sure. maybe I, I was thinking of like, um, maybe selling also the, the, the documentation of the work, like the restore it. So I'm also always thinking yeah. of, and I also I do a lot of processing. So I do a lot of mood boards and research. And normally I do it a lot with Instagram so that the people can look what I'm doing and what I'm researching because it's so, I'm just sitting in my room and, 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 and thinking and planning. So I try to, to make it visible, visible, visible for the others. And, um, but I'm always thinking of maybe I, I, do something like um, selling also the mood board or the, the, the sketches. Mm -hmm. I have the strong feeling that now we should wind way back because um, working with plants in, in that detail does require certain knowledge and it's not something that you get along during your art studies, I guess, because I know that you studied art so you didn't study gardening and uh 
So let's, let's talk about this. How did you find your love for art? How did you start and when and how did you find your love for plants specifically? And of course, how did you start working on the topic of nature? So you mentioned that one point uh, with your iPhone. So I guess this is a very important point, but this question is, is about more. So take your time. I want to know everything. <laughs> Do you have one hour now? <laughs> If you want, yes, because we don't have a limit here. <laughs> so it's, I, um, like I told you, I'm on the farm and I grew up here. So my, my parents are, have, have always been farmers and um, I was one of these childs always in the garden and at the stable and surrounded by nature, I would say. And my, I attended a school for agriculture and for gardening. So I had five years of gardening, but I was pretty unlucky with that. So I was really interested in, in, in like, um, yeah, in music and in literature. That's why I, I started to, to write and to draw and to write. I, I wrote for music magazines and then I was, and then I was just interested in, 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 in Ah, now you're breaking up. We will have uh, to start here again when you could. Ah, okay, so now I got you back, and uh, I think the last thing I heard was around music magazine. So, okay, I would like to have it in a short in a short way. I wrote for music magazines. I was interested in art and design and everything which uh, was connected to culture, because I was in the school for agriculture. So I was, um, and then I studied design. I studied textile design. I studied experimental arts, and then I made my diploma in painting. So that's the short version. So that's why I have quite a variety of things I can add into my into my exhibitions. Um, And um, I had like this one turning point when I went to the to an artist residency um, to Pagliano uh, near Rome. And at this point, I was something was changing in my life because I split up from a from a long time relationship, and I needed to focus new because at this point I did like 10 years of painting exhibitions, and I was kind of bored of it. And um, I went to Pagliano only with like three pencils and my phone and it was the thing I don't want to, to take something to want to take the colors with me because it's heavy and I wanted I wanted to travel there a lot and um, so I went to Italy and then I, 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 I was there and I was like oh my god what should I do here <laughs> and I started to, to walk around and to, to stroll in the, in, the, it's in the countryside I don't know if you know it um, it's on the countryside and I had been so it was in May and there had been so many flowers and I was really like and so many plants and it because it was raining so much and it was warm and I was really like wow and it was like a time travel pack to, to my to my childhood and I started to pick flowers and to, to bring them home to the studio and but then I was all the time like what should I do with them with the material and so then there was this and then it was the first time I I don't know I did I was not thinking so much and I was just um, picking the, the plants and then I made like this first hanging garden situation and I remember that I was going I was closing the door in the evening and in the next morning I was opening and the, and the wind was coming in and all this and, it, and there was this smell like the good smell and and it looked so like perfect and it was combining so much things for me and I was like okay now because I always added nature in my in my art but this was the time when I invented to have them as the main protagonist in my in my work and yes and then I went to to Pompeii and I saw it's it's in the background I saw a fresco of, uh, of uh, it's one of the first um, images of a garden in, in in Europe and so then I slowly I I I started to research about gardens, about is it this ideal of gardens, the metaphors, the stories, and then I found out that you can, that it's like a big and huge topic. And for me, it's also like a, yeah, it's like a coming home <laughs> because I, I found out I know so many plants because I learned them. So it's like it's like going back. And this is also it's always the best thing in art if you can do it very authentic because, um, yeah, it's nothing I have to take from somewhere it's just here
Yeah, that's that's really you, you really have, have have a good story here, and I, I really could could feel it now when when you talked about it. I also really liked the part where you started uh, talking with your hands when you talked about Italy. <laughs> <laughs> So you spent some time there. That's that's obvious, and that I really like that. I feel sometimes uh, more, more comfortable in Italy than here because I always talk with my and my English is almost the same. It's not perfect. It's more like like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's great. <laughs> Um, okay, um, by now we did not talk about the two paintings behind me here in the exhibition, which are the green small ones for everybody who doesn't know them. Uh, maybe we can talk about them and you tell us something about these two uh, paintings and how they came along and uh, everything about them, yeah. Yeah, um, I created them, um, I did a residency in Salzamt uh, in February, I think. So it was like when the, no, it was February, March, and then the lockdown came and um, I was, because I was working on two big installations, I decided to do some small works as well. Um, and so then suddenly they came out of my, of my work. And so I do, do, did a lot of um, still life paintings in, as it's all the time I do some still life paintings. And um for a long time, I was quite of unsure, can I just paint the flower? Because it's so like, it's maybe too poetic or maybe too naive or maybe too less to say it uh, in this way. Um, but then I, I don't know, like, it's like the, the like the flowers or plants, they, they, they grow, they blossom, they also fade away. So they are very, um, very much connected to human and it's it's just nature, so I I feel like I can be allowed to 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 paint just a flower, and I always do this like um, the zoom. I don't know if you see it that well. It's like a passepartout, mm -hmm. and I do the zoom um, because I like to hold it very vague, and so like the the spectator can uh, yes uh, can have his own story. So you don't know who is holding the the flower. You don't know who is the person. Why it is so. Because like plants have so many metaphors and they stand for so many things like um, it's maybe just beautiful or it's sad. So you can have your own story. And you can interpret it, interpret it like you want it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, plants in art do have a great history. And do you relate to the work by any artists with your work? Are there maybe some influences you can talk about? Um, so in the planty way I would say okay you have like these um, Flemish painters and all these things you can see at the art history in at the Kunsthistorische Museum um, so <laughs> because I have this painting background yes I I naturally connected I feel connected with them because I also do it in oil painting and I do it like the old masters and but um, for me, more important are like, um, because I'm so much interested in space and if you work with nature, it's also so much about the space. I, I'm more, sometimes more interested in architecture and in writings. So what other, people's, <laughs> other people wrote. Um, and so normally I take a topic or I have, I have like a space and then I have a topic and then I for this thing, I, I create like a mood board and I, I, I read books and like for the last, I did something for Schloss Hollenek and this was very closely related to a book by Italo Calvino. And so um, these are my my connections and also like for the, the, the Chardin Verdu I did, I, it was, because I have the lyrics, uh, it was, um, it was a lot the book of the Il Giardino del Cupertini. <laughs> so these are, these are my connections. And for architecture, I was reading a lot of um, Peter Zumdor or the, I don't remember the, who invented the, strolo the strolology. <laughs> you know him? Like Lucius Burkhardt. Because no, I not really. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's, a, he's a architecture philosopher and He's, he wrote a lot about um, nature and city and 
plants in the city and this was it's kind of my topic so um this is i'm not so related to art because on instagram you see every day so many pictures and it's more like i'm searching for for this connection so how can i to have like some inspirational words or phrases Okay, wow, that's that's very uh, actually very detailed. Uh, just uh, uh, um, uh, meet meet me asking for some names, and you can really go into detail. So I I really expected you, and don't get this the wrong way, but uh, working with nature and plants, I expected it to be mainly hands on. <laughs> so, but that that that, that you have such a, a deep theoretical background is uh, very. It, um, I wouldn't say a surprise because it's not, but it's it, mm -hmm. it's just great to hear all these names and, and stuff about it. And I'm really interested in this, actually. Um, yeah, uh, maybe, I mean, we are already like more than 20 minutes in, the time flies. Uh, but maybe let's talk about your recent personal history. So uh, you already talked about your residency at Salzamt, uh, but maybe you could tell us how did the COVID-19 crisis affected you and your work? Um, so... First, it was like nothing really changed for me because here on the countryside and I work alone, so <laughs> it was not really, uh, yeah, not really a difference. But I made like two big projects at this time, and this the one was like for Schloss Holleneck, and the other one was for uh, at the Botanical Garden of the University of Vienna, and both have been quite huge. So the one got a little bit tinier at the end because of COVID but um, and it was really troubling because I had pro problems with the fundings I had problems to get to people on the phone I had problems to to research because like the garden markets didn't open and I I had problems to get the materials I needed um, and it was all the time like changing I don't know is there a vernissage or not and can, can it be public or not can it be like big or small or whatever and so like at Plus um it was like the, it was just online so it was online streaming and also the they made like a 3D tour at the exhibition um, and then you have to think different because I knew I have to build it up alone and it should be just visible on the on the on the like on the on the camera, so you 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 think different because so that's why I need to to plan it a lot of times. So it was all the time every week it was changing a little bit, and it was a lot of like maybe it it, it will be next year. So uh, yeah, problems, <laughs> not really, but quite okay I, I was I was happy because I was um, and, and at the Botanical Garden it was like the first day it was the first of uh, July and it was the first day when there um, when it was allowed again to have a event <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. okay um, but, okay yeah so maybe yeah but I have else to add because um, I, I tend to be quite shy and I was always the person who said I don't want to go to my um, venissage, <laughs> to venissage because I didn't like the feeling and I was always like oh, maybe they should do it alone and I go somewhere else and then at this Schloss Holleneck exhibition um, opening it was the first time I was just sitting with a glass of wine in front of the laptop and it felt so sad <laughs> <laughs> I can't I really can imagine that yeah I was really because it was so much work and it, I just for weeks you 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 did just was I was focused on this project because it uh, it, it tended to be really big but then I then you're sitting at the evening in front of your computer and then you really think like wow <laughs> so I changed my opinions and now I feel really happy to have an event uh, and and here we are sitting in front of computers talking about art. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what's, what's, what's currently up in Emily Wagner's life? What are you currently working on and do you have any exhibitions upcoming? Um, so I'm, uh, I did the next thing is I think in three weeks it's, uh, I do this um, setup called Ombrosa, like in the book of Italo Calvino, for, um, the, for Schloss Holleneck, for design, for the Vienna Design Week again. 
Um, so this is the thing I'm currently um, working on. And then there will be an exhibition. I will be part of a group exhibition at Salzamt, but I don't have clear information. Now, so I don't know what, what I will show there. And then I applied for some residences again. So I don't know what the future brings. And then I want to, so there are a lot of things I'm ongoing in my studio. So with botanic and botanical illustration and botanical materials. And what I know is that I want to do um, something with the, a project with the botanical garden again. Okay, great. Perfect. So then uh, let's stop here because uh, this was a really great compact talk with so much information. Uh, maybe if you want, you could uh, write down some of your uh, uh, literature and, 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 and names you dropped in, in the comments below uh, because I think this is something uh, people really want to look into, including me. So, uh, and uh, thank you. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. See you see you next time in Linz. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. In real life. <laughs> bye. Bye. Yeah.